how to love his wife. Amen. About the time I'm ready to give up, I begin to see through the eyes of Jesus, and Amen. I'll try to see through the eyes of Jesus, yes. and to see how he loves them and where they are in his eyes, uh, not whatever it is that um, I'm trying to overcome in this person, people. Yes, Lord. And uh, really, right now, we don't, I don't have anyone in our congregation that is um, constantly, continuously challenging me. But you, you know, that's the Lord. So, I mean, yeah, some of you are challenges, but. Um, <laughs> 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 but you're not challenging. It's so no. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe challenging. <laughs> But anyway, a man in that group, songwriter, uh, wrote the lyrics to the rose, the song of the rose. And you know how beautiful it is. It's a secular song. Pastor, if you want me to play that, I know that very well, so later I will play it for you if you want. I want you to play it right now. Okay. Okay. So it's my persuasion, and if any of you have your sermon notes, I've got the, I've got the words here so you can sing along with it. If not, I'll let you. It's my persuasion that uh, this is a metaphor of the song. Oh, you got the words there? Can I have yeah. the words? Because I may forget some of them. Okay. You I got, I got it on this. I don't know if you want yeah. to that no, that's okay. Oh, that's you don't want me singing. Yes, I want you to sing. <laughs> Jesus. Now I'm going to read these words. 
Some say love it is a river, and truly it is, that drowns the tender root. Mm -hmm. And some say love it is a racer that leads your soul to greet. And some say love it is a hunger, an endless aching need. See, that's co-sensible, carnal love. I say love it is a flower, and you its only seed. Mm -hmm. It's the heart afraid of breaking that never learns to dance. It's the dream afraid of waking that never takes a chance. It's the one who won't be taken, who cannot seem to give. And the soul afraid of dying that never learns to live. Until you're dead to your carnal soul, you will never live. And when the night has been too lonely, and the road has been too long, and you think that love is only for the lucky and the strong, just remember in the winter, far beneath the bitter snows, lies the seed that when the sun's love in the spring becomes the road. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I can relate to that whole song. Mm -hmm. I was once too cool to get my heart broken. <laughs> <laughs> Not by a man. <clears throat> and then God get it with a daughter. <laughs> reads the Rose of Sharon, and in chapter 2, the Shilonite, Bride of Christ, is beginning to realize how much her king loves her. The song is a journey of the bride for the baptism of the Holy Spirit to the throne room, and I have a whole teaching on this. We did it in 2007, y'all will remember. We taught the Song of Solomon. Love is too wide, too deep, and too high for our language to express, and the Bible says so. Love passes knowledge. So all the songs that are written about love, all the volumes of books that are written about love, I don't have the words to express what is inside of me, where love is a reality. <coughs> because love passes knowledge, so if love passes knowledge, it it surpasses our vocabulary. Ephesians 3.19 And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with the fullness of God. So if you and I are to know the love of Christ, it will pass our knowledge. Mm -hmm. It has to come to us by the Spirit. And then it will be a forever learning process through eternity. Love is a supernatural power because God is love. That is impossible to describe within the language of man. Because the love of Christ passes knowledge. There is the carnal love of an unsanctified soul, which can be very painful. Uh, carnal love, need love, codependent love is where uh, those little demons come and put an arrow in your heart and you feel the pain of love. But in Christ's love, there is no pain. You're in a pain for his own because you're loving in the spirit. So whenever you feel that pain in your soul because of a love relationship, Satan just hits your soul. Because there is no pain in the Spirit of God. Through the love of Jesus Christ, the love of God with all the fullness of God is offered to us. Paul describes the indescribable in Ephesians 3, 16 through 20. This is the Passion Translation. Be constantly using your faith. The life of Christ will be released deep inside you. And the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Providing you with a secure foundation that grows and grows. Love grows. And as your spiritual strength increases, 
you will be empowered to discover that every holy one, what every holy one experiences. The great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions. Paul was a lover. How deep John was a lover. They all were. How, because they came into this love of Christ. How deep, deeply intimate and far-reaching is his love. How enduring and inclusive it is. Endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you're filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Now, Christian, this is your portion. Christian, whatever you're going through, this is your blessing. This love is to be resident in you. You are to experience and be part of that eternal fellowship. It is yours on earth as it is in heaven. Psalm 6-3. I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. The divine poem tells the story of divine romance in our journey with Christ Jesus as our bridegroom king. Speaks of the journey every longing lover of Jesus will find as his or own very own. The symbol of the bride, and there's a place inside of us. It's the lower part of our stomach, and that's where it was me, where the Spirit of God, where the Spirit of God comes up from within me, it comes from here, and it rushes through my body. And there's a place inside of us where the Holy Spirit is resident in all of our body because the Spirit fills our whole body. But in that place, his, that love is resident in us all the time, and we can pull on it all the time, no matter what we're going through. Mm -hmm. Now, you know your children can get to you faster than anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let something yeah. be going on with your children, and boom, mm -hmm. you know. And, but uh, pull on that resident love in there, mm -hmm. and, and, and pull on it for them. That love of Christ is what comes out of you for the body of Christ. We remove ourselves from the situation as ministers of the gospel. We remove how we feel, respond, think, uh, how it's affecting us. We remove ourselves and we allow the love of Christ to flow into the situation, Amen. not our feelings. About the situation, right. you can get there, church. Right. You will. The love of God will be totally controlling you. And I see everybody nodding. Now y'all, y'all all know that. The symbol of the bride, who are Christians, pursuing and being given to the bridegroom King Jesus, represents the community of brides, the church. For the beautiful bride overflowing with her lover's life is to be given to others, even as Jesus was given to us by the Father. She has become a feast for the nations, wine to cheer the hearts of others. The city is a picture of a local church, a place with government, order, and overseers. The king's vineyard is also a picture of the church. The called out multitude of those who follow Jesus. As we mature in love with Christ and in his love with us, uh, we are able to love others unhindered by the immaturity of our issues. Okay? Our insecurities. <coughs> our feelings and our expectations of how a person should respond in any given situation. Y'all knew that was my downfall in Baton Rouge. I thought those people ought to do better than they did. <laughs> my expectation of them was that they should walk mm -hmm. with God with so much love and happiness and they ought not mess up. And they would mess up. 
And I would take me about three days. I told him, I said, take me three days to get over it when y'all mess up. <laughs> <laughs> but, but God changed me. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you mess up now, you just mess up. I'm just going to pray for you. God will give you life. And somewhere along the way, down the road, you're going to get straightened out. Amen. I mean, I'm not going to get upset over it. Bless the Lord. You know, because it isn't, it isn't about me getting upset mm -hmm. or how I feel about somebody messing up as Christian. And if I can remove myself from it, then you just go on, do your thing. Um, catch up with me when you're ready to get right with God again. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's just where I am. I like you, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. And, now, i got to get back here. See, i got all kinds of pages that we'll do well and finish all this. Because, see, when I preach something several times, every time I come preach it again, I keep adding to it. Bless the Lord. New revelation. Yes, because you just, you're just coming. Every time you preach there any, but you're just going to keep getting revelations and revelations yeah, and right. revelations. Yeah. Uh, in Psalm chapter 1, right at the start, it's made clear to us that the foundation of the relationship is built on mutual attraction between a man and a woman. Okay. If, and, um, you know, I came to Jesus because I, I, I figured out that uh, I, the blessing was in Jesus, okay? So uh, I looked around the neighborhood I was in, and the people who were blessed were those people who were going to church. The people who didn't go to church were having a pretty hard time of it. I, I figured that out in my head growing up. <laughs> in this, it's all the relationship. It's, if this is all the relationship, it's your attraction, physical attraction to someone that won't last long. That's right. True. <laughs> so it has to have a foundation. Then what will happen when the thrill has faded? Word. Mm -hmm. A true relationship of lasting love cannot be built upon physical thrills and feelings. Mm -hmm. However, if the Lord brings two people together, if you heard my uh, wedding sermon, you'll always hear this because I know it to be true. The bride and groom are charged with the physical energy of nuclear fusion. It is a nuclear <laughs> <laughs> Right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> when two hearts joined by their creator join in a lifelong bond, there is an actual power force that, between my husband and I. You can actually feel the power force. Um, this nuclear fusion, of course, and I'm sensitive to the spirit. So maybe I feel things that other people don't feel. But I have, uh, you know, we just need. Uh, and I'm not talking about private things here. But we would just be together and there would be a nuclear fusion going on between us. But see, that was the Spirit of God. Drawing that relationship together. And this is, uh, and of course God did put us together. He gave, God gave me Don to make me stronger. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Now this nuclear fusion, I, don't, I can't say that it's not as powerful as being born again or being filled with the Holy Spirit, but it is a tangible presence and a power force because God put them and woman together. Psalm 1 4. Draw me, we will run after you. The king has brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in you. We will remember your love more than wine. The upright love you. Passion translation. Draw me into your heart and lead me out. We will run away together into your cloud-filled chamber. <coughs> we will remember your love as we laugh and rejoice in you. Celebrating your every kiss is better than wine. No wonder righteousness adores you. One of the scriptures in the Passion 
said that we will dance together in the um, ladders of in the sky. We will dance together in the ladders of the sky. Oh man, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so in this verse, the bride is crying out to be drawn closer to him. We do that. We cry out, God, draw us closer to you. And see, Christ in us is the hope of glory. We are to be in his glory, and that's when we are in him. So we should continually try, cry out to be drawn into him. We cry, God, fill us, and Christ come into us, and I am born again by Christ. But the ultimate union is when you are in him. And um, many people are lonely and crying out for earthly love to fill the emptiness within them. Earthly love doesn't have it. Okay? Because your partner is crying out for, for to be filled too with whatever needs they have. Uh, two empty tanks don't make a full tank. Uh, <laughs> two half full tanks don't make a full, one full tank. We give out of a full tank. And the only way that you and I can give out of a full tank is that Christ keep our, our tank full. Loneliness is a spirit. I know. I used to have a lonely spirit. God delivered me from loneliness. And it was um, Nikki Cruz's book. Mm. Uh, lonely but never alone. Do not doubt that God uses people to write books that will deliver you. That's right. When I read that book, I got delivered from the spirit of loneliness. Mm -hmm. It's never come back on me again. Okay. And were you married? Yes. And I had yes. children when I read the book. Yes. They were little. Yes. But I was still lonely. Be married and lonely. Yes. Uh huh. Is it and he was probably lonely too. I mean, you know, not, not that the marriage was together. And, Healthy, you know, reasonably, I guess. Um, and and then in in that time, the Lord spoke to me that loneliness is a spirit. Mm -hmm. So if you are lonely, you must cast the spirit out of you. Many believers, even today, wander from church to church, from relationship to relationship looking for something that they can't really describe. Maybe I'll find it over here. Maybe this preacher's got it. Maybe this one. And they do. They carry blessings. And they don't find what they're looking for. You see, for divine love surpasses knowledge. Some try to fill their loneliness with multiple relationships. Uh, there is a book I have on my shelf called... Uh, Love Hunger. I think that's the name of it. Uh, no. Following after love in all the wrong places. Mm -hmm. This is when people go to the street yep. to find love. Mm -hmm. Or they go chasing love. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're looking for love in all the wrong places. All the wrong places. Yeah. And they end up being prostitutes, prostituting themselves, mm -hmm. multiple uh, relationships and but they're that they're looking for love in all the wrong places most time people interpret this loneliness as a result of the way their brethren in the churches their mother's sons have treated them verse 6 they uh, they wandered from church to church someone hurt their feelings uh, when you go to church, just so you know, there's other, other sinners in the church. Uh -huh. <laughs> and if there were other sinners in the church when you got there, then there would be sinners in the church. <laughs> and they are in the church to help smooth off uh, the, the uh, sin off of you and help you get delivered. <laughs> the sun, as she in of hard knocks mm -hmm. has blistered and bronzed their skin mm -hmm. until they feel that they have taken a little more than normal from their brethren. Mm -hmm. Following on into the song, 
The heart cry of the bride is to draw me in your footsteps. Now I'm talking about y'all's journey that y'all have already been on. The bridegroom begins to answer that prayer and draws her into a closer communion with himself. This always causes a division between those who desire his nearness and those who want to stay as they are or they want to be in control of their life. I have become aware, and I'm not, and I'm, not I'm thinking about it, our church is full of people with free spirits. Have you noticed? Mm -hmm. uh, it, almost every single one of you, if somebody locks the front door, you're going out the back. Laura, <laughs> 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 you're laughing too hard back there. Okay, many of the legalistic churches mm -hmm. that are out there, we got beat up in. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I, I was disciplined. Uh, I was disciplined under, the, under a father that me, either they would beat me or whip me or but all you had to do was look at me. But I, I, I was taught the discipline of a family. I was taught the discipline of life. And, and so I learned about these things. But I have become aware, and I guess I am a free spirit. Oh, I know I'm a free spirit, I guess. <laughs> Lord, you have given me a church full of people who are free spirited. No one, I wouldn't even try anyway because I don't want to, but no one is going to lock you up, tell you you have to do this or you have to do that, no. which I surely would not do. Oh. You have total liberty. Yeah. Now that liberty gets some, some people in trouble mm. <laughs> at times. Jesus. Okay, Paul was following in the footsteps of Jesus. 
You don't want to follow someone who is not following in the footsteps of Jesus. Amen. If they have their own agenda, their own program, their own ambition. Oh, there's so much ambition out there. Selfish ambition. To uh, promote. People do not promote yourself. Do not promote yourself. It, it, it will. Your kids will make room for you. Amen. Okay. Uh, you don't have to do this. Because Jesus is going to put you where he wants to use you if you promote him. Amen. Every word that comes out of our mouth should be promoting Jesus Christ, not yourself. Amen. Okay, we're moving along here. Y'all need to hear so many things I already teach. I'm trying to get uh, on here, but it keeps coming out like that. Song 1-8. Listen, my radiant one, if you ever lose sight of me, just follow in my steps, footsteps where I leave my lovers. Passion. 114. My beloved is to me as a cluster of campfire, campfire in the vineyards of Injadi. The Hebrew word for campfire, camp, camper, camper, camper thank you, means price of a life, ransom and covering. Uh, passion translation. He is like a bouquet of henna blossom. Can I pluck near the vines of the fountain of the Lamb? In chapter 2, some changes have taken place in the bride. See, it started out, she was calling him to come to her. Come, you know, come to me. And then she begins to follow in his footsteps. Uh, she's been concerned with what her beloved could do for her, which we all started there as baby Christians. It was all about me, what he could do for me, what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, now we see a growth in her vision of him that allows her to see him for himself. You're not in love. Uh, okay, I'm going to talk to some men now. I guess women too. There are often times I will see men want to marry a woman because she can make him happy. Mm -hmm. Or a woman wants to marry a man so that he can make her happy. Mm -hmm. When you fall in love with that person, you want to make them happy. Mm -hmm. That's how you know the difference if a man loves you. Mm -hmm. If a man loves you, he wants to make you happy. And if you love someone else, you want to make them happy. Okay, so our our um, Shulamite has grown. At first, it was all about wanting the king to come make her happy. All right, I'll give you my laundry list. <laughs> if you do this, 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 and this, well, Lord, I'm going to be happy. And this is what I want from you. Okay? No one in here ever prayed like that. I know. I can tell it on you. <laughs> okay, but now she sees him for himself. Yes. She begins to worship him. Not so much because of anything he has done for her or will do for her. He, you know, the scripture, he will give you the desires of your heart. Okay, now. He has become the desire of her heart. And what he desires, now she desires. Oh, that's, a, that's very liberating, y'all. You can just never get there. The relationship has a long way to go. And if we study the book of the Psalms, and I've got a whole teaching on it, I took it verse by verse, and it was so wonderful. We see it grow to perfection by the end. But at this point, we at least see progress. Looking out over the mountains, she sees her beloved coming 
and sees him not as someone coming to do something good for her, but as the one she loves coming eagerly to be with her. The voice of my beloved, and behold, he comes leaping up on the mountains, skipping upon the hills. All my husband ever wanted from me was my time. It was very excessive to him. He wanted me spending my time with him. I'd be working around the house doing what I wanted to do, busy, busy work, work. All my husband ever asked for me was my time. And he wanted it himself. And I failed, I think, because I had things I had to get done. Yes. And he would say, Carolyn, come sit by me. Uh, and he would, he would kidnap me, take me away. He would kidnap back at Little White Church when he was alive, y'all remember? Yes. The middle of the week he took me. He wanted me to himself. Yes. Okay, so after he died, I knew I was going to have to learn how to be the wife of Jesus Christ. That's right. And oh, I'm very busy. I, I got to study the Word, and I'm praying, and I'm reading the Word, and I'm, I'm, I'm preaching the Word. I got this meeting and that meeting. That's not what Jesus wants from me. He wants me to spend one on one with him. And so I asked him, I said, Jesus, you're going to have to teach me how to be in this love relationship with you because I don't know how. Because I've got to, you know, do this and that and the other and something else. And I'm still learning. I'm still learning. The picture of a young stag leaping eagerly across the mountains shows he wants to be with her. It has never been any difficulty for us to realize that we desire the joy of the presence of the Lord. But when it finally dawns on our realization that he actually desires to be with us, that we're growing in our perception of what the relationship is all about. Are y'all hearing me today? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wants me. He wants Marcella. Yeah. He wants Ann, Sandra. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to wrap you in his arms. He wants to dance with you. He wants you to come into a love relationship with him and just sit and talk with him and spend time with him. And when we get there, we're growing in our love. In any love relationship, there's a uh, mutual, reach out, mutualness of desire, each desiring the company of the other. And this relationship is no less. Since his love is greater than my capability of love, then he desires personal time more than I do. Mm. Our human nature is selfish. We are just as selfish with our time as we can be with tangible Square. I will seek him who my heart loves. See, at this point in the, in the Psalm, chapter 3, he had asked her in chapter 2 to go away with him to the mountain of spine. In chapter 2, he says, Come, my beloved, and go with me to the mountain of spine. 
And she says, oh, I'm not ready. I got some stuff to do down here. You just go on without me. Mm -hmm. It's chapter two of the song. I don't have that scripture there. You go on, I'll catch your, you know, I'm gonna do my own thing. That's in chapter two. Mm. But until she gets to chapter three, she can't find him. Mm -hmm. um, I will rise and go through the city. That means the churches. In the streets and the square, I will seek him whom my heart loves. I sought, but did not find him. The watchman came upon me on the rounds in the city, and I asked them, Have you seen him whom my heart loves? People looking for revival. People looking for the presence of the Lord. People wanting Jesus to show up in their meetings. People wanting the power of God and the Holy Spirit to come into their meetings. But he came, and no one had time for him. Right. <clears throat> they had other things. They had programs to take care of. Scarcely had I passed them that I found him whom my heart loves. I helped him fast. Nor would I let him go. Passion translation is verse 4. I found the one I adore. I caught him and fastened myself to him, refusing to be feeble in my heart again. Now I bring him back to the temple within, where I was given new birth. Into my innermost part, the place of my conceiving. We have people crying out for God. We have pastors crying out for God to come into their churches. We have hungry people out there saying, Where is He? The bride cannot fill the void of her loneliness and emptiness by running through the city, even among the fellowship of the believers. In them there is fellowship, but Jesus is found in solitude. This morning I had a vision, just as I was waking. I wasn't going to tell you all about it, because I haven't figured it out. And it's very ominous, really. Um, and this prop doesn't have anything to do with Roger, so if he's watching, God just uses him as the prophet. When God is coming to me as a prophet, he has Roger Steele come tell me something mm -hmm. in a dream, and Roger probably doesn't know anything's going on. Okay. So Roger came to see me, and we were going to have a meeting, I guess. But he said to me, somebody was praying playing some wild Christian music. Let it drop for knowing it, and I don't know, some, I don't know, the kid pop or something. Certainly wasn't in our church, but he was just playing. So he went over and he said, turn that off. He said, uh, we're going to pray another, play another song, pray another song, but Carol, I've got a, something I've got to tell you. So he put on a record by John Denver. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is not a real song, but I heard John Den Denver say, I'm going to Houston, and there will be silence in the city. Mm -hmm. Roger had a message for me, but he didn't tell me the message. But I'm going to Houston, but there will be silence. pursuing a strict way of life that conforms to a rigid set of rules. Amen. Neither will he be found where the merchants sell their wares. This is not to say there is much we can receive from others to help us mature and grow 
of others' experiences in Revelation. Mm -hmm. As ministers of the gospel, we're called to teach, preach, and equip the saints for the works of the ministry. However, the watchman and the God's ministers did not have the answer for her loneliness and her emptiness. This could only come through continually seeking him, pursuing him, and desiring him above all else, that he was found by her. And when she found him, she helped him and would not let him go. This does not mean that we have to have a ritual, a set time for prayer, but if that's your deal, yes. her, go ahead and do it. Uh, it means that we are continually, continually in fellowship with the Lord, and we voluntarily join him in prayer and Bible study because we delight to do so. Mm -hmm. yeah. I cannot believe with all that's going on in the big city of Houston, Texas, and plenty to entertain you, that you are coming here on Tuesday morning out of any sense of obligation or duty. Right. If you are, it is not pleasing to the Lord. That's right. Mm -hmm. You are coming to the Word if you're coming for any other reason than to fellowship around the Word of God mm -hmm. and receive the fullness of the Word inside of you. It, your, your reasonings are wrong. How beautiful you are, my love. How beautiful you are, Psalm 4.1. One thing we never seem to be able to grasp is that the Lord loves us and is pleased with us. Wherever you are in your walk with Christ, when you, when you received him as your Lord and Savior, he was pleased with you. Now, you have, may have not have reached the full maturity where you and the king together are releasing the kingdom upon the earth. I hope all of you are. But wherever you are in Christ, like I said Sunday morning, don't beat yourself up. When you beat yourself up in the spirit realm because you're a spirit-filled, born-again Christian, you have great power in the realm of the spirit. And so when you beat yourself up and you put yourself down with your mouth, you will bring sickness on yourself. We must get to know how pleased God is with us. Our spirit, which is the part of us that makes contact with God, is of the same substance spirit as our creator. It's his spirit. He lives in us. And so it's untainted by the world system. The rejection of our soul and body is, of course, in progress. God deals with us in our spirit to bring this about. The spirit part of man is birthed by God. And because this is the case, it has no spot in it at all. The spirit of God that is in me is totally pure. Amen. Now, my flesh is spotted and tainted. I try to keep my soul clean so the devil has no hold on my soul. But he's always looking to see if he can find somewhere to get me. But see if you stay before him every day, you talk to him every day, see if he'll show you. When we learn to think in terms of our spiritual life and not our humanity, we learn that Jesus is totally pleased with what we are because we are his love. And and it is he, he so loves us. He wants you to be happy. Mm -hmm. Like I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. This is his desire for you, Christian. He takes pleasure in you and me. And you know, if, if he takes pleasure in that, and she takes pleasure in him, I got, that, that doesn't take away from my pleasure. I don't need Lucy's pleasure with God. I don't, I don't have to be jealous of it. 
Amen. I don't have to be jealous of her beautiful voice. I can't Amen. sing like her. But the pleasure sure. that she has with Jesus Christ, Amen. It, it's so abundant mm -hmm. that I don't have to be jealous of her pleasure. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I don't have to covet it because God wants Amen. to give it to me, too. Okay, 4.15. A fountain of gardens, a well of living waters, and streams from Lebanon. Passion translation. And I used a longer verse. It's so beautiful. Your life flows into mine, pure as a garden spring. So love is a river. Love is a spring. A well of living water springs up from within you, like a mountain brook flowing into my heart. Then may your awakening breath blow upon my life until I am fully yours. Breathe upon me with your spirit wind. Stir up the sweet spice of your life within me. Spare nothing as you make me your fruitful garden. Hold nothing back until I release your fragrance. Come walk with me as you walked with Adam in your paradise garden. Come taste the fruits of your life in me. Isn't that beautiful? When Jesus talked to the little woman beside the well in Samaria, Jesus said to her, give me to drink. The woman replied, how is that you being a Jew? I drink for me a woman of Samaria. You know, God sent us to Samaria, the women. The Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans because they were not of Jewish descent. Mm -hmm. Back when the Jews were taken into captivity from that area, the captors had filled the area with foreigners. Mm -hmm. The foreigners had been taught by Jewish priest about God, but they were not Jews, but she knew about him. She knew, she knew all about the Jewish religion. Jesus answered the woman, if you only knew who was talking to you, you would have asked him to give you a drink, and he would have given you living water. Jesus, Jesus, almost the same words as the verse in the song of Solomon. When he said he would have given her living water. Living water is spring water, fresh and pure as it springs from its source. God is the source of all love, and he it is who puts that longing within our hearts for him. He puts that longing in you for love, and people run all over the place looking for it in all the wrong places. And it's only in him. Mm -hmm. A garden enclosed is the setting for this living water that flows from him to the bride and then is found springing up back to the source in a love relationship with him. Jesus promised that the water he would supply would be a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The word, the well is actually a fountain. He gives that living water to us deep inside our hearts. It creates a deep longing, a desire for the Lord. It says in Ecclesiastes, there is a space inside of us mm -hmm. that will be empty until it connects with Jesus Christ. See, it is that longing and it is that emptiness in people who are not saved, who people who do not know the Lord, that causes them to run everywhere to look for it. And they get into bad relationships. They go after drugs. They go after sex. They go after uh, alcohol to fill that empty space. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. Earlier in the song, I read in 2.16, she said, my beloved is mine, and I am his. See how she's changed? Oh. She changed.
She was putting herself first in the beginning. For now, she turns it the other way around. She puts him first. As she says, I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. See, in, in, in 2.16, it was her first. It's now becoming more important to her that she's pleasing to him and that she belongs to him than what he can do for her. 6 4. Mm. You are beautiful, <laughs> oh my love, as Tarzah, calmly as Jerusalem, terrible as an army with banners. And of course, this is a whole message here, and I'll try to zip through it really quick because I'm going to try to finish here very shortly. Y'all can finish this. I got pages. The bride is an awe-inspiring battered host. The Shulamite is as Mahanium, the place where God camps or dwells. Two armies. Mahanium means two camps. Number 4624. Two hosts, armies, encampment. She is dancing. Mm -hmm between the armies of heaven and the armies of the earth. And that's what the church is being called to in this hour. Mm -hmm. The dance of Mahanium is the dance of victory over all enemies. Romans 10, 14 through 15. Going back to Passion Translation here. Uh, Psalm 6, 4. Oh, my beloved, you are lovely. When I see you in your beauty, See a radiant city where we will dwell as one. More pleasing than any pleasure, more delightful than any delight. You have ravished my heart, stealing away my strength to resist you. Even hosts of angels stand in awe of you. The Bible tells us that angels are watching the church to see what we do. They don't know the full redemption story. But God has put it in you to discover in Christ his redemption plan for the earth. As we press into him, as we press into Jesus to get his redemption plan for the earth, the angels are going to stand host. The host. And Isaiah it says, in the four corners of heaven is the host of heaven. In the four corners of heaven. That's a place where the host, the armies of God are kept. In the four corners of heaven. And I believe it was Pat Curse that God took her there. And she said, but not everyone was taken there. Oh, but this Shulamite, this bride of Christ. Oh, she has that honor. She has that pleasure. She is dancing between the host of heaven and the host of the earth. whether the vine flourished and the pomegranates budded. Or ever I was aware my soul may be like the chariots of Amenadib. Um, return, return, O Shulamite. Return, return, that we may look upon you. What will you see in the Shulamite? As it were, the companies of two armies. The armies of heaven of the armies of heaven and the armies of the earth. There is the moon and clear is the sun. This is the lightning and bright shining of Jesus appearing in his name. All the earth is waiting. All the world of earth is waiting for a move of God that will bring in the harvest. Oh, it's going to be glorious. 
The light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be seven sevenfold as the light of seven days. And the day that the Lord binds up the breach of his people and heals the stroke of their wounds. Isaiah 30, 26. He has come to dwell in her heart by faith that she might be filled with all the fullness of Christ. Now the king leads his bride forth. He went into the garden of nuts looking for signs of new life. He's looking for the fruit of her womb. A man child. A son. A man child who would be his heir and possessor of his name. This is the third garden. You have been brought to my side to sit as queen and be served. You and I together must lay down our lives for our people. Our tears must fall with their tears, and our hands must be stretched out always to meet. 710. I am my beloved, and his desire is toward me. Chapter 7. She's no longer talking about what he could do for her or even what she feels because of him. She's now talking only about her beloved and what she can do to show him her love. That's total unselfishness. If we look at the sequences of the other times she has said, I am my beloved, we can see the progress. First of all, it's most important to her that he belongs to her. Next, it became important to her that she belonged to him. Finally, it is only important to her that she belongs to him and that he desires her. Her own feelings in the matter are no longer important at all to her. Who is this coming from the desert, leaning? Lord delights for us to lean on him. He is our source of total supply. The Lord uses sources such as a job and businesses to supply our needs. He always wants us to recognize that he is the one who is supplying, even though it comes through someone else. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Sometimes the need is emotional, sometimes physical, and sometimes financial. Mm -hmm. But whatever it is, if we will let God work on it in our lives, he will bring us to a place where we are fully and completely leaning on our beloved. Mm -hmm. 10 through 13. I am my beloved's and his desire is toward me. Come, my beloved, let us go forth into the field. Let us lodge at the villages. Let us get up early to the vineyards. Let us see if the vine flourishes, whether the tender grapes appears and the pomegranates bud forth. There will I give you my love. The mandrakes give a smell, and our, at our gates are all manner of pleasant fruit, new and old, which I have laid up for thee, O oh, my beloved. She is speaking to him. The Shulamite has been made ready to be a co-laborer with her brother. She was not able to initiate, initiate a work in his behalf. She may not, dare not, go on without him. She is now ready to go forth with him into the fields of the world. The field is the world. Now that the bride and the bridegroom have become one, all creation will feel the impact song has come full circle. In the beginning, he was drawing her. <clears throat> now she's drawing him. She who was invited now offers the invitation. This is the more excellent ministry, which operates by the creative spoken word <clears throat> in the areas of forgiveness and blessing. They will continue in that priesthood, for it is immutable and unchangeable. 
The royal couple continues walking down the road. The daughters are following, but at a distance. But the king and his bride know where they're going. The mandrake indicates that it's time for the bride to become the mother of the king's child. The moon is under her feet, and on her head is a crown with 12 stars. This sun is the hope of a growing, growing creation. As the daughters of Jerusalem wait and wait, one day there seems to be someone walking up the highway. It's more than one person. It just looks like two people. And again, it looks like three people. It could have one, two, or three. It's hard to tell. It is the king, the daughters cry, who has returned. <coughs> the Shulamite is clinging to his arm so closely that the two appear to be one. Who is this that comes up from the wilderness, <coughs> leaning upon her beloved? I raised thee up under the apple tree. There your mother brought you forth. There she brought you forth that bear thee. The child like a child is born to me. <coughs> just where you were swallowed, swaddled, a babe, just there by your mother, Moffat. I'm, I'm giving you other people's translation. The King Jesus is the apple tree, the tree of life. The mother is a Shulamite, brought forth. To travail, to bring forth in birth, a man, a maid, and a man-child. Just like Abraham, Sarah, and Isaac. Just like Boaz, Ruth, and Obed. So we have the king, the Shulamite, and a man-child. The man-child is the Joseph Company, David Company, Joel's army, the overcomer, the 144,000, the Benjamin Company, and it goes on. Verse 6. Set me as a seal upon your heart and seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death and jealousy as cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which has a most vehement flame. That vehement flame is the flame of God that draws two people together and draws us to God. The flashes thereof are flashes of fire very flame of the Lord. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would be utterly condemned. It cannot be love. Mm -hmm. This is the message of the sons of God in their manifestation, the love of God. The word and ministry of reconciliation first work of restoring this growing <coughs> creation starts with the daughters. The king is jubilant, the bride is radiant, and the sun is magnificent. The daughters are joyous, the little sister is resplendent and shining silver, and the rest of creation stirs itself in the chains of corruption. She was the one who opened the way and brought forth the seed that had bruised the head of the enemy. She has a place at the king's side and that no other may have. She is eternally the bride of the Lamb of God. Solomon had a vineyard at Balhamon. He left out the vineyard unto keepers. Every one for the fruit thereof was to bring a thousand pieces of silver. Some say the thousand pieces of silver are sold. Others say this is a reference to a vast amount of wealth. The supplier of every need, the bastion against all storms, and the cry against every creditor stands before her. He has a vineyard, and she has a vineyard. My vineyard, which is mine, is before me. Thou, O Solomon, must have a thousand, and those that keep the fruit thereof two hundred. Make haste, my beloved, and be like to a row or to a young heart upon the mountains of spices. She is speaking to him. You see, now she has gone to the mountain of spices. He invited her in chapter 2 to go with him to the mountain of spices. But she says, no, I'm not now. I've got things to take care of down here. Mm -hmm. But 
now she's in the mountain of spices with him and that's the fullness of earthly love. The fullness of earthly love and divine love pulled together. Passion. Arise, my daughter. Come quickly, my beloved. Come and be the graceful gazelle with me. Come be like a dancing deer with me. We will dance in the house. Oh, that's the scriptures. I got it. We will dance in the high places of the sky. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Yes, on the mountains of fragrant spice. Forever we shall be united as one. And the mountain of spice is metaphor for the fullness of earthly love and divine love which has become the love of Christ. We again see Jesus in the power of his resurrection. Her heart cry joins the cry of the redeemed of all ages. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus, that all the kingdoms of this world may be the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. This is our, her desire to see him at his second coming. Spirit and the bride said, The king is here, and he is coming. Amen. Amen.